Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long uh, War of the Chosen, saving your disaster campaign. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Advent Lockdown campaign. It is time for a very difficult mission in uh, this 13th episode or 12th episode of uh, the series. We're going to try to reap some supplies. The problem is we're going to see a protect the device mission and those in the end game are nigh impossible to do, certainly with um, lack of equipment they are um, even more difficult to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change uh, the mission to um, actually try to kill everyone uh, don't give an uh, F about uh, the uh, device and try to benefit from getting some loot and some experience that's what we're trying to do let's go all right, we landed. The sad part about it is I just realized if we're losing this mission, which we're most likely going to do, so it's going to be a failed mission, uh, we're probably going to lose uh, the entire area as well. And that really stinks. So let's well, 80 Intel down the drain on top of losing it. Um, but yeah, that's how RNG sometimes works. Uh, we got ourselves a random mission. Unfortunately, that random mission was the worst thing that could have happened and now we're stuck with it does it suck absolutely can we do anything about it nope so might as well uh, get over it and try to do your best right so i would like to stay on the high ground if possible so you will see that most of uh, the XCOM agents will actually stand here on high ground. I'm all over it. That's affirmative. Roger. I got, my eyes on. got the first pack down here. Let's hope they are moving into our direction and not away from us. Of course they are moving away. Sprinting away from us. I should rather say. <laughs> and the worst possible outcome. Logistically, that is the absolute and by far worst possible outcome. The strongest uh, pack. So here's how it works. Uh, there's always one pack near the device, which, by the way, is now taking fire and will be destroyed automatically. So the mission after round one is already lost. Um, so there's a random uh, pe uh, pot that is protecting uh, or standing next uh, to the device. Unfortunately, in this case, it's by far the strongest uh, pot, the one with the sector pot. And what happens is, unless triggered, that pot will continue. The leader of that pot will continue to always shoot um, at the device every single round. 50 hit points, sector pot uh, with 10 base damage deals the most damage and hence uh, will kill the entire thing in only five turns. G G. Affirmative. Moving out. Hilarious, if you think about it. Actually hilarious. Okay, I don't like opening up with a grenade but they are so far within that house and I don't want to trigger another pack that we needed to remove some cover here there we go Can we move up? We cannot. Which means we're trying to take our shots. Nice little hit. And thanks to blue screen rounds, the Spectre never stood a chance. Moving without triggering anything. 
This here shreds him. Very nice. Hayward takes the flanking position and... Thanks to her ability, she can hit and with Implaceable just position her, uh, herself back where she needs to be. Getting some run and gun with Pitbull. Everyone at this point has blue screen rounds. And since um, the shells cannot take any cover, might as well move over here. As always, the preview is bugged. Luckily, we can use the teamwork and finish off the Andromedon shell. There we go. Done deal. First pack done. Limited amount of resources used. Yep, we're down 21 hit points. That's great. Fantastic. Can't really move on top of the roof anymore. Yeah, we, I mean, we could take this position here. But that's pretty much about it. Upon closer inspection, might not be the worst position ever. And of course, there's yet another pack. Luckily for us, we did not over engage, which is a mistake uh, that's commonly done as well. Just being over eager to move in. Let them come to us is the name of the game here. Before we're destroying the tower, what are the benefits of hacking it? On your order. I got eyes on Advent troops. Oh, look at that. Luckily, we have not taken any other turn yet. So let's see what the benefit would look like. I like that immunity. It's probably something that I could see myself taking this turn because that way um, Scorch can take uh, some of the heat. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. Okay, what else? Uh, we got run and gun over here. Could certainly move up. That might trigger the uh, next pack, which we don't want. So the other option is taking this away. Uh, which would probably uh, which I would probably do. Oh, well, there's another pack here. The beauty of a small map is 
you gotta fight against all of them at once. Okay, we can certainly take that. Um, let's actually take the hack. The immunity isn't too bad. The enemies will not know that we do have the immunity. And reinforcements at this point wouldn't matter too much because we would just um, ab abandon the mission. For now, that immunity helps us. And with the immunity out of the way, realistically speaking, uh, before we use that, might use his because we do have high ground with the other uh, grenadier. Very nice. Time to deal with the Spectre. Nice. Critical hit for 16. That is awesome. We could try to move down here. Could try to move to here. That's not bad. I like that position a lot. That's not bad at all. Trying to find decent spots well, we're not exposed. This here would be great because um, Pitbull has death from above and getting height in certainly help us. Problem is we're super exposed up here. Moving further over to here could get us on high ground next turn. Yeah, this here is probably the most sensible solution. And let's try to maw down the elite, uh, the advent officer. Very nice. I was just trying to uh, damage him. I didn't want to kill him, actually, because then I could have used the grenade to kill both of them. But uh, with him out of the way, we are in a decent spot. What I could do is I could uh, remove the cover down there. Can't hit both, unfortunately, but I could remove the cover. And there is a distinct advantage of doing so, because with removed cover, we can get in to uh, to kill with Hayward. And she will get untouchable again um, as well, which means our entire front line is untouchable or immune to uh, several hits. With the exception of Ogre or Hoffman up there. And he has three armor. Moving in without pulling anything. 71% to hit, 78% to kill this guy. I'm going with the 71% because we need a crit in order to kill him. Fortunately, didn't work out, but there is a chance for a hair trigger. Nope. Well, not the worst event ever. Certainly not the best either. Enemy is getting some more hit points, which is to be expected. 31 hit uh, damage, so we're down to 19. Let's 
A Spectre is not too dangerous. Not yet. Yeah, that's uh, that's okay. He only has a move uh, action from here. Shadowbone is actually okay for us. Mainly because they will not attack uh, him in the future. Well, that's okay. That's good. We can follow up with a Spectre and kill it next turn. Yeah, easy. Easy. Moving up, that will trigger Bladestorm, which was my backup plan. There we go. That's why I moved her here. I actually wanted to kill her, um, kill him and get untouchable, but Bladestorm certainly was the backup solution. Nice loot for us, that's good. And we are in an interesting position. Okay, let's make sure we're doing everything by the book. This here is finally our high ground. Massive amounts of damage. With that, death from above triggers. So we're having a bonus action for her. Moving into full cover. Very nice. Does not trigger anything yet. Let's just open up the playing field. Moving up. Needle definitely needs a good, a better position. Let's give him the high ground here. On my way. Getting a bit closer. marked him and I'm very careful on how we're advancing this trigger is untouchable and implaceable My ammo's running low. this here should not trigger anyone One more round and it, it will be gone. But uh, if you liberate yourself from the burden of needing to save it. Oh, whoa. Did we really forget about him? There's a lot of immune uh, people. Yeah, untouchable and immune. Okay, I totally forgot about him. That was a lapse of judgment right there. Next turn we're going to lose. I don't see how, how we can deal with that. Oh, 
not much cover. Ogre gets a heal. Can't really move him anywhere. Let's reload. He's in full cover, that's why I also didn't want to move him anywhere. Pretty solid hit. I would absolutely love to go here and hit him. I'm not going to do that though. Triggers the next pack. Okay, fair enough. Seventy percent chance to one shot uh, the uh, codex. Of course, he decides to completely and utterly ignore everything and dodges time for reaper this here should trigger untouchable Alright, we're using our time to reload. And to deal with the elite purifier. Another Archon. How about... That's three hit points. It's unfortunately just barely above the threshold of what we're being able to kill. Could move up. Don't want to do that really. This here will mark him nonetheless. So let's just stay here. I could have reloaded to just optimize it a bit more. We're untouchable. Might as well move a bit closer. This here could be a nice crit. Well, normal damage works as well. And let's kill the Archon. Down it goes. No need to counter heal. And yeah, that is it. Like I said, we have uh, had little chances of uh, dealing with just the the pressure. You you cannot uh, chew through the that amount of hit points and at the same time um, deal uh, with with a timer that is so close. If you think about it, the timer essentially had been five rounds. Sonic Bomb, yeah, I figured that that would happen. Right, couple of things to make sure that we're, that we're playing this, right?
Okay, I would assume... Fortunately, this here is not cover. I would assume this here is still in range to throw the uh, grenade onto both of them. Assumption is correct. Hopefully we're shutting down the sector pod. The answer is no, we're do not doing such a thing. Definitely, is he burning? He appears to be burning. Yeah, he's burning. That's why he can't launch the acid bomb. That's tragic. Because we need the shredding. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, let's see. Are we close enough? Yes, we are. Yeah, but also not by miles. So I got to really keep this position here. Reloading. Hitting the sector pod down to four armor. I don't think that we will be able to shred him much more than that. It would be nice if we could, but unfortunately, that the burning uh, prevents us uh, from doing so. Oops, wrong button. All right, reload. Run and gun. To go behind full cover. That's some solid damage. Unfortunately, he's still standing pretty strong. Not enough to kill it. My biggest problem is that we don't have the damage to actually kill him without taking damage. Fallback solution is we could um, just hit it normally now, uh, bringing it almost down and then essentially uh, kill him with a melee attack. That's probably what we need to do, to be honest. So let's go for it. So what are we going to deal with? Eight points of damage. We're looking at what? Four plus two, four, five. That's not a hundred percent kill. 
which means we cannot reload and do it because um, if I fail, if it's minimum damage we're sending, we're going to be sending in the open. This here is acceptable because Blade Storm next round will trigger, and um, and will give us the kill outside of our um, own round. There is a chance that we're going to kill him. Unfortunately. That did not fully go according to plan. So we were forced to use these extreme measures. Taking the high ground into cover. That's the untouchable gone. That all you got? Oh, come on. I don't want to lose Hayward due to the some of this bullshit. Okay. At least that worked out. Yeah, we it was a very nasty situation. We I got a random tick of um, of burning here. We still don't have Mimic Beacon, so there's really no falling back position, so to speak. And the Psionic Bomb on top of it also didn't really help us. Go medical. All right, moving up. Interesting, that is indeed quite interesting. Um, we could try to hit this guy and actually kill him. Do we have the power to do that? Yes, we do. And in my mind, I already have a plan of how we want to deal with that. Getting everyone into position right here. Let's start with the basics. Well, that's six points of damage, that's seven to nine, but he's in a little bit of cover. This here would be including shredding. And it would take everyone's health away if this guy would die. Yeah, I didn't get it. That did not work out as expected. Alright, I do have an idea though. There's always a backup plan. Let's try to hit this guy here. Finally, his shield is removed. Biggest problem is, couldn't do anything against him previously due to his high shield. Now that he's shredded, the situation looks a bit different. All right, reloading. Running. 
Run and gun. Moving up. Thanks to rapid fire. We're going to have a nice little kill here. Implaceable could position us right next to him. Let's try to hit him. Oh, come on. The death from above, I was actually hoping for uh, some death from above uh, resets. We could have used uh, the crate in order to trigger explosions, then death from above resets. Problem with that is it just didn't really work out uh, very well. Moving back into high ground. It's not a bad uh, thing to be positioned up here. And next turn we're going to kill them. To my knowledge, they cannot kill us this turn or kill any one of us in this regard, which is why I didn't go all in. Oh wow, I forgot about the sniper. I actually were able to reach him almost. And now they are starting to become annoying. Ogre reloads. Ogre blows up the, the crate of this gentleman right there. And this time we're using death from above. Moving up. That's a reset. That's how it's done. And that's maybe even another kill. Nope. Enemy is still up. Good. That deals with his cover. And it was much more of a slugfest than I would have anticipated beforehand. Wanted to do it uh, flawless, but I think we had like three or four uh, soldiers that even took damage. Believe it or not, uh, yeah, mission failed. I d don't even take a look at that. The more important part is uh, the actual rating. Believe it or not, uh, the mission was uh, more difficult than I would have anticipated. I already knew it uh, would have been difficult to go through it without uh, taking damage, but since it was such a clustered map, not much I could do. And by the way, just for reference, if we wouldn't have done the mission, uh, we would have lost uh, that territory as well. So there was really nothing, no, no victory to be achieved here. We got a promotion, which is okay. The wounded times are fine as well, I would say. I like the death from above, but I like quick draw even better for now because uh, we do have upgraded pistols and having the option to shoot three times uh, with lightning hands and twice with your pistol absolutely makes sense. Um, got ourselves superior mobility and a superior stock. That's not bad. I think that's something. But we paid greatly for that. In terms of in terms of our uh, PCSs, I think the superior mobility definitely should go on Hayward. She did very well this turn, and you could see glimpses of um, just glimpses of how a real endgame team is supposed to look like. The lack of, the severe lack of equipment definitely is still an issue. Oh, I was wrong. We did not lose Eastern Europe. Maybe because it was a bonus mission. Not sure about that. Um, in terms of next steps, so I think we, we continue to heal faster. 
it's the best thing that we can do at this point we lost the mission but we did not lose anyone so extra promotion and so on was fine superior um, uh, speed is worth 50 intel so that's good as well uh, there are a couple of nasty uh, effects happening and there is uh, there are basically the other two missions can get a scientist uh, and a hidden event and could get an engineer loyalty amongst thieves is not really that bad fighting the warlock might be worse but it's only a lost mission so let's check this out I didn't want to continue that campaign, but it seems to be giving and giving, and I still need to finish that month. So, more gameplay, I suppose. Let's take a look um, how our team even could look like. Do we have enough uh, people available? Yeah, somehow. It's not perfect, but we will eventually get there. Um, yeah. I'll figure out how we're going to do that. In the meantime, uh, thank you everyone for ta uh, for watching. It's been a pleasure. If you enjoy the Saving Your Disaster campaigns, then feel free to leave a comment down below. We're still fighting in order to kind of uh, get this one right. And it's not totally across the hill, but I'm doing my best to speed it up. So see you in the next episode. Bye bye.